This video is on bushfire in Australia. For those of you who don't know right now as I speak, there are numerous places in Australia on fire. It is also called wildfire. It actually started in September of 2019, but now it has fueled up. This whole wildfire incident is not something new. It has been happening since 1851. Whether you call it a bushfire or a wildfire, it simply means fires burning in a grass, bush or forested area. Have a look at the Australian continent. It lies in the Southern Hemisphere. During the month of December, January, February, it is summer in the Southern Hemisphere. Because the Southern Hemisphere is exposed to more direct sunlight due to Earth's axial tilt. That means in Northern Hemisphere, it is winter season. Basically, if you're coming from the Northern Hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. So the hottest months in Australia are December, January and February. And right now, a series of bushfires are burning across Australia, especially in Southeast Australia. The entire Australian continent is divided into six states. They are Western Australia, South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania, which is an island state of Australia. This part over here, Northern Territory has not been given a status of a statehood. It is usually seen as a part or a colony of South Australia or Queensland. Anyhow, so there are only six states in Australia. When we say Southeastern region of Australia, it comprises of the state of Victoria and New South Wales. But then there are bushfire happening in the state of South Australia, especially in the eastern part of the state, and also in the southern region of Queensland. Here's the capital city, Canberra. Then here is Sydney, and here is Melbourne. In a nutshell, the most happening places in Australia are in the southeastern region. The most affected state is New South Wales. It is having its worst fire season in 20 years. The state is home to Sydney, which is Australia's largest city. The whole of the Australian continent is the driest continent in the world. You can say it's mostly a desert. If you want an exact composition of the Australian landscape, then 70% of the country is classified as arid or semi-arid, and the remaining of it makes up the Australian deserts. The continent also receives very little rainfall. Only the coastal parts receive a good amount of rainfall, otherwise the mainland receives very little rainfall which is less than 500 millimeters of rain annually. Now the question is, why is Australia so hot? We know that the Tropic of Capricorn passes through Australia. If you remember the map that shows different climatic zones of the world, the northern part of Australia is a tropical zone, and the southern part falls in the temperate zone. Even the Indian subcontinent has the same case. And we also know that in between tropical and temperate zone, there's a small border zone known as the subtropical region, which is a high pressure zone. At high pressure zone, air sinks. I'll briefly tell how that happens. The equatorial region is a low pressure area. At low pressure area, warm air rises and moves toward the poles. Near 30 degrees north and south latitude, the warm air sinks and creates a high pressure zone. This region is also called as subtropical high. This atmospheric circulation pattern is called Hadley cell. It is named after George Hadley who was a famous meteorologist and he proposed this mechanism. If you want to get more clarity on this particular topic, I have a separate video on it. The link is there in the description as well as at the end of this video. Watch that and you will understand the mechanism in more depth. As I was saying, in the high pressure region, the warm air sinks. When it sinks, it makes the surrounding air warm. And this is one of the reasons why Australia is hot and arid. And then comes El Nino. The effect of El Nino on Australia results in low rainfall and warmer temperatures. I also have a separate video on El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is also called ENSO, E-N-S-O. If you're interested in knowing that mechanism, I'll put the link of the video in the description as well as at the end of this video. So overall, all these are the possible reasons why Australia is a hot continent. When the climatic conditions are such, naturally that will result in drier vegetation. Now 2019 was Australia's hottest year and also its driest. The combination of extreme dry, hot and high windy conditions adds up to these wildfires. Because when the vegetation is just dry, it will burn, right? Another fact is, for thousands of years, indigenous Australians have used fire to clear grasslands for hunting and agricultural clearing. There's a term for it. It's called shifting cultivation or jhum cultivation in India. Bushfires are sometimes triggered by these man-made events. So these are the possible reasons behind Australia's bushfires and wildfires. If there is any other point that I've missed out, especially the Australian viewers, 
If you have any other reason or any specific point that contributes to these wildfires, I'll be very keen to hear that. Please write it down in the comment section.